We now know how our lungs actually operate and we are familiar with the gas exchange process as it takes place inside the alveoli of our lungs. Now let's focus on something called lung volume and lung capacity. So in this lecture we're going to explore questions such as how much air is typically exchanged by our lungs every single time we take a breath and how much air can actually be stored inside our lungs in the first place. So let's begin by taking a look at the following diagram. The y-axis is the volume of air that is exchanged by the lungs given to us in milliliters and the x-axis is our time. Now notice as time increases, as time progresses, we have this fluctuating blue curve and what the fluctuating blue curve essentially describes is it describes the process of breathing. Every time the blue curve increases, we essentially allow air into our lungs and every time the blue curve decreases, we expel, uh, expel air from our lungs. So the increasing portion of our blue curve is the process of, of inhalation and the decreasing portion of the blue curve is the process of exhalation. So let's begin by describing something called the tidal volume. So earlier we asked how much air on average is exchanged by our lungs when the individual is actually at rest every single time we take a breath. So if I stand here and I don't exercise, then I basically take about 10 breaths of air every single minute. And every one of these breaths exchanges about 500 milliliters of air inside our lungs. And this is what we call the tidal volume. Now, the tidal volume is the portion between this top line and this bottom line. So this is our tidal volume. And so these fluctuations basically describe the normal breathing rate. So we essentially inhale and then we exhale and we exchange about 500 milliliters of air every time we take that breath. Now, what exactly is the maximum amount of air that the lungs can actually store? This is called the total lung capacity. And it's the distance between this maximum point and the zero line. And on average, for an average individual, it is equal to about 6,000 milliliters or six liters of air. So if the person wishes, they can take a very deep breath. So if I take a very deep breath, let's say I start at this point, I go all the way up to this point. And at the maximum point on this curve, this is this black line right here. And the distance from the black line all the way to zero, this is the total lung capacity equaling to about 6,000 milliliters of air. Now let's move on to something called the vital capacity. The vital capacity is essentially this distance here. Now let's suppose we're taking our normal breath. So we're basically right here. Now eventually when we're taking our normal breath, let's suppose we actually want to forcefully exhale all the remaining air in our lungs. So we take a breath and at this position we begin to forcefully exhale the remaining air and at the maximum point of the forceful exhalation we're going to be at this, at this location and the distance from this purple line all the way to the top, this distance here is known as the vital capacity and the vital capacity is equal to about 4,800 milliliters of air per breath. So essentially, if we forcefully exhale our air, we're going to end up in this region. And then if we try to actually forcefully ex uh, inhale as much air as possible, we're going to go from this location all the way to this location. And the amount of air that will be exchanged by the lungs during that process is equal to 4,800. So this line is about 1,200. This line is 6,000. Taking the difference gives us 4,800 milliliters. Now let's move on to something called the residual volume. 
Now, even when we actually forcefully expel all that air out of the lungs, we're going to end up on this purple line right here. So if we forcefully exhale, we end up right here. And notice inside the lungs, we still have a certain amount of volume of air. And this is known as the residual air. So no uh, residual volume. So no matter how hard we try to breathe out, there will always be some amount of air inside our lungs and this is known as the residual volume. The question is, what exactly is the physiological importance of the residual volume? So let's take a look at the following two diagrams. So inside our lungs, the specialized structure where gas exchange takes place is known as the alveolus. And we have many alveoli in our lung. Now the alveoli basically looks like a balloon and it could inflate as well as deflate. Now, the reason we have residual volume, the reason we have these air molecules inside our alveoli is to create a pressure so that our balloon, the alveoli, the alveolus, doesn't actually deflate all the way, doesn't actually collapse because if all, the, if all this residual volume, if all that air was actually removed from our alveolus, we would essentially create a vacuum, an absence of air. And when we have an absence of air molecules, we have no internal pressure, and because no pressure exists to actually push on the walls of our alveolus, in that case, the walls would essentially push back, and that would create this collapsed structure. So we want to keep that air inside the lungs. We want to have the residual volume of air because we want to keep the bronchioles, the passageways, as well as the individual alveoli from actually collapsing because if they do collapse, that will make the process of breathing very, very difficult. So this distance here is our residual volume. Now, if we take the sum of the residual volume and the vital capacity, well, that will give us the total lung capacity. Now, let's move on to something called the functional residual capacity, but before we define what the functional residual capacity is, let's take a look at this ERV. ERV stands for Expiratory Reserve Volume. Now, what exactly is this? Well, let's suppose we're taking our normal breath. So we're taking about 500 milliliters of air every single breath. Now, at the end of our breath, at this location, we essentially choose to expel, we forcefully expel all the remaining air from our lungs. And the amount of air that we can actually forcefully expel is given by the ERV value, the expiratory reserve volume. So the expiratory reserve volume is this distance here. It's the difference between this height and this line here, so this bottom portion line of the tidal volume and the residual volume line, that gives us our ERV. Now, if we take the sum of the residual volume and the expiratory reserve volume, well, that will give us something called the functional residual capacity, which is this distance here. Now, we also have this volume, which is the inspiratory or inspiratory capacity, and if we take the sum of the inspiratory capacity and the functional, functional residual capacity, we also get the total lung capacity. Now, the final concept that I'd like to briefly discuss that relates to lung volume and capacity and breathing is known as the anatomic death space. So every single time we take a breath, let's suppose we're taking a resting breath, we inhale, we exchange 500 milliliters of air every single time we breathe. 
Now, only a portion of this air actually ends up in the alveoli of the lungs where gas exchange actually takes place. The rest of that air is trapped within the passageways of our lungs, and that includes the trachea, that includes the bronchi, as well as the bronchioles. And because gas exchange only takes place in the alveoli, no gas exchange takes place in the passageways, we call the air inside the passageways passageways the anatomic death space because it's the air in the passageways that cannot be used for gas exchange because gas exchange only takes place inside the alveoli of our lungs so it turns out that every single time we inhale 500 milliliters of air at the normal resting rate then what that means is only 350 of the air milliliters of the air actually ends up in the alveoli because 150 milliliters of the air ends up in the bronchioles in the trachea and the bronchi and this is known as the anatomic dead space so about 30 percent of the air that we inhale 30% of this quantity doesn't actually exchange anything with our body because it remains inside the passageways of our lungs, inside the bronchioles, inside our trachea, and inside the two bronchi that connect to our lungs.